I did a test spot on the driver's side portion of the hood on the Viper here. We had a nice turnaround, the imperfections, the swirls, the staining, etching, and overall dullness is gone. And I'm going to show you on the passenger side exactly how we got to this point. Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. And this video is slated to be released on New Year's Eve, so... I want to wish you guys a happy, healthy, prosperous new year, and I truly look forward to spending 2022. Geez, I, I just got used to writing 2021 on paperwork, and the year is gone already, but I look forward to spending the, the new year with you guys. A lot of content planned, and uh, let's get right to it. On the passenger side, you could see all the swirling and the imperfections we're going to remove. On the driver's side here, even with the swirl finder, we've made a huge turnaround. I'm going to show you how we came to that on the passenger side. Before we do any type of correction whatsoever, we do want to protect some areas. The line or the edge of the PPF here, we want to protect that so the pad does not bump up against it, lift an edge. Once it lifts an edge and dirt gets under there, it will never lay back down again. We also want to protect the vinyl stripe going up the middle of the hood. Also, since I'm working right over the passenger side front wheel and tire, and they're clean, let's cover them. Let's take just an extra minute, cover them up, keep them nice and clean and fresh. These wheel covers, by the way, you could pick up at Harbor Freight for under 10 bucks for all four. We also want to protect the plastic cowl and vents right in front of the wipers here. By the way, this is the second video of the series. In the first video, I shared how the clear is hard, clear coat, just like Corvette. So we're going to use the H901 from Kalkemi. We're going to team that up with a hybrid wool pad from Lake Country on the rotary. We're going to cut to the chase. It's going to need something hefty to do the cutting and remove the imperfections. And we'll get right to it with the rotary and this combination or team. Let me finish priming the pad and we're going to start cutting. So what we're doing in this step, this is the cut or the shaving part where we remove uh, a small thin layer of clear coat, bringing those imperfections up with it. And then we're going to add a second step to finish up, remove the haze, bring out the clarity, the deep gloss, and that nice deep red color. H901 has a nice cycle time or open time, but it finishes down well. It is a, uh, a nice complementary cutting compound to team up with the hybrid wool pad, which also has a nice initial cut but finishes down as well. Those are from Lake Country. With many wool pads, especially the cutting wool pads, there will be a second step added, and that's just to remove the slight haze and to bring out clarity from the surface. The polisher is run near the fourth speed setting. I'm just guiding the polisher back and forth. As you can see, my hand's cupping the side of the polisher, not forcing pressure down on top of the polisher. Just really my thumb is applying pressure. That's all you need. Using the rotary also cuts down on temperature. Uh, this clear coat's nearing 20 years now, so we really need to be a little careful with it and preserve it. Also something to take note, because the clear is so hard and stubborn, I'm slowing my arm speed ever so slightly compared to other videos you may have noticed me using the rotary. This gives a chance for the combination of the correction fluid and the pad to do its work. 
uh, but yet keeping the, the polisher or the tool moving so we're not running into trouble digging too deep into the clear or spiking temperatures. Stop after a pass or two, remove the residue, wipe off the dust. There's going to be a little bit of lint, even though these are very low lint pads. You're going to get a little bit of dusting, a little bit of lint here and there, and a little bit of residue as the rotary isn't the cleanest tool in the world to use, but it's so um, effective and so quick when it comes to cutting and finishing. It's well worth that extra minute or two to clean up a little bit after yourself. And you can see for yourself, just after this short amount of time working on the panel, we've gotten rid of those imperfections and just now have a slight haze to remove. And then, of course, you're going to see me finish up around the vents, especially with a smaller polisher, smaller backing plate and pad, and then even breaking out the extensions. And there's also attachments for the rotary that you can get in tight areas, especially behind door handles and around emblems. And after this step, you're going to see that the imperfections have been removed. There are some that are a little bit too deep to go after here and there. Not too many. This is going to get close to being uh, pristine when we're finished. But what we have left now is just a slight haze to clear up. This next step is going to be easy. And speaking of that next step, Kokemi M302, it's going to be finishing uh, micro cut. Now they do have a micro cut pad to go with it, but on a harder clear coat, I like to team it up with their one step pad. A little bit firmer, that'll help finishing up on such a hard surface. All right, let me grab the camera and bring you in close. This is what we're looking for here. This is the finish we're going after on this beast.
Well, the shop manager didn't seem impressed at all with what I just showed you. So let me quick show you a 50-50 on one of the worst parts of the vehicle here. This is around the door handle where you can bump up against the car with a belt or buckles or buttons and just touching. Uh, this has a, uh, this doesn't have a handle. It has more of an electronic handle for it, which, which pops the door open. So you have to grab it and any jewelry or a watch or rings can bump up against the door and the surface. So let me tape off an area and we'll do the exact same combination over here and uh, we'll pull the tape off and I can show you the 50-50 of the turnaround you can get with really hardly any effort at all with this combination. Okay, here we go. Uh, we brought back a nice deep red, um, has nice reflection, crisp reflection of the light compared to uh, the area with all the scratches and imperfections. And that's all we have to do is repeat this process all the way around the vehicle. It really doesn't take that long. It's just that the curvatures and uh, all the different designs uh, and body lines on this vehicle slows you down a little bit. So from here, I'll just uh, show some snapshots here and again on what I use in different areas and exactly what we go after. We uh, try to perfect and polish absolutely all of the painted surfaces on these vehicles when there's a budget in the package to do so.
So I often get asked, how long does something like this take me? Well, you do have to keep in mind, I do get customers coming in and out and phone calls um, and questions throughout the day, and it breaks me away. I rarely get a chance to work on a project all the way through nonstop. But something like this takes a nice full eight to 10 hours. We're now finished with the cut and the finishing portion, and we can move on. That's gonna finish up this video. I really wanna wish you guys a happy new year, and as a little bit of uh, a present, uh, I'll have free shipping throughout this whole weekend from the site. I'll have the link down below, and I can't wait to spend 2022 with you guys.